Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this BALM introductory webinar in which we look at letting go of control without letting go of a struggling loved one. We let go of our obsessions, not of our loved ones. We don't turn away from them unless we get to a point where we've done everything that we can and it's healthiest for us to take care of ourselves first. So, boy, that was a loaded statement. You know, we always make sure that we're taking care of ourselves. At the same time, this program teaches you how to get your own life back while helping your loved one get theirs back. And in this introductory webinar, we're looking at how that manifests in terms of control, letting go, giving up, or giving in. And in fact, principle three of the BALM talks about this very idea that it's important to let go without giving up or giving in. And when we talk about letting go, we know that it's really very difficult to do. In fact, it's almost impossible to let go of that obsessive need to make things turn out the way we want them to, unless we have a shift of attitude. Until we have a shift in attitude, we will keep that insistence that things go our way. And the BALM is dedicated to helping each and every one of our families have that attitudinal shift. It starts by understanding that, yes, the family has a critical role to play in a loved one's recovery and that your loved one can change and so can you. And then we say, let go of control. And if you do all these things, you can be your loved one's best chance at recovery. So what are some of the things? The first is to focus on behaviors within your control, such as your attitude, your emotional well-being, your thoughts, your words, and your deeds. And let go of obsessing about how things will turn out, how your loved one will behave, what other people will think about you, the stigma, the worry, the fears. And of course, we know this is easier said than done, but we do need to do this if we wanna have an impact on our own lives and that of our loved one. How do you do it? <laughs> well, this is a very purposeful solution-oriented program. And um, we're not pushing ourselves, we're easing into a better way of life, but it does take perseverance. So we invite you to meet the challenges you face in your life and with your loved one with perseverance. There are a couple of great quotes. Perseverance is, falling, is failing 19 times and succeeding on the 20th. That's Julie Andrews. And I didn't fail. I just, described, I just discovered 99 ways it wouldn't work. And of course, that's Thomas Edison on his invention of the light bulb. We invite you to meet your concerns with a willingness to stay out of denial so you can face the concerns head on. Of course, in the BALM, we really care most about the facts because the facts will set us free and set our loved ones free. And in order to get to that point of having loving conversations based on fact, we have to be willing to not give up. But, you know, letting go isn't doing nothing. It isn't allowing a substance use disorder or an other use disorder or a mental health disorder to go unnoticed or untreated in your home. And it's not about turning a blind eye toward a family member's unhealthy or dangerous behaviors. The fact is that everything's not gonna be perfect. You know, this happens to be a picture of a couple. We have couples in our program. We have parents and children in our program. We have siblings in our program. And whenever you're in relationship with another human being, it's rarely, 
if ever, perfect. So what do we mean by letting go? We, in the balm, we learn how to let go of the fear of saying or doing something. We let go of the resistance to family recovery education. We let go of the feeling that their problems are none of my business. We let go of the hopelessness that often accompanies having a user in the family. We let go of the it's their problem mentality. We let go of the obstacles keeping us from acting on the deep love we feel for our family member. And we let go of the freak out factor. Oh my God, without losing momentum. What does that mean? So your loved one is caught up in their disorder and they have they exhibit a behavior that is typical for someone with that disorder. If it's a drug use disorder, they have they use drugs and you see the result of it, or you may even observe them doing it. If they drink, you see them drinking. If they have a mental health disorder, you may observe a psychotic break. There could be a lot of different things that you observe. If they have a sex use disorder, you may see texts from someone that, that you believe they have no right to be in relationship with, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the old way is, oh, I can't believe this. How did this happen? How could you do it again? Oh my God. The fact of the matter is when a person is in the state of mind of a hijacked brain that many of our relatives are in, this is how they'll behave. So one of the things we let go of is being surprised, freaking out not being able to believe it. This is how it is. That doesn't mean it's always going to be that way. It doesn't mean that they can't get better, that they won't get better. It doesn't mean they're bad people. It just means that this is how this disorder looks in its active phase. So what are the obstacles in our path to letting go? Well, if we don't know enough, we're not going to be able to let go. And if we're not willing to make learning more of a priority, we won't be able to. And if we're unable and unwilling to see and accept our own power in the process, it'll be hard to let go. Another thing that makes it hard to let go is flooding. And we'll be talking about that today and finally enabling. And we define enabling as anything that you do that helps your loved one get their behavior or their drug of choice. So let's talk about flooding. What is flooding? Flooding is a stress reaction that stops you in your tracks. It's a fight or flight adrenaline rush. Your blood rushes from your brain to your toes. So you could call it an extreme stress reaction where your muscles tense up and your heart pounds. Are you flooding? Now? Yesterday? If you flood, there are full instructions on how to stop flooding on pages 121 to 123 of my book, Balm the Loving Path to Family Recovery. And if you're already a Balm member, you'll see the PDF of, that say, of those same instructions inside principle three and step three in the handouts. But here are some basics. Know your symptoms. Breathe. So, in other words, if you have shortness of breath, breathe deep and slow. If, you're cl if your fists are clenched, open your hands and stretch your fingers. If your thoughts are jumbled, list facts and read them back to keep your mind focused. And if you're going a million miles an hour, slow your pace. Stopping the flooding takes practice. We really go into it a great deal in the balm. And we recommend that you make it a practice to get yourself out of flooding as quickly as possible. 
flooding is a natural reaction to difficult circumstances. So, you know, when we talked about the freak out factor, you see something like, I can't believe this is happening, that your loved one is doing that, by the way, we know is a normal behavior for somebody who's active in, the, in their disorder. And you start to flood. So you're, oh, you can't think, you can't. But as you practice the balm, you're gonna learn how to calm yourself down. The quicker you can get out of that state of flooding and go to calm, the more use you will be to your loved one. What if they're flooding? So you wanna watch for their symptoms. Do they have a flushed face, pulsing veins, disjointed sentences? Don't talk at them, let them talk. Give them time to vent. Ask sequence questions. What happened first? What happened next? And use a low, calm tone of voice. And of course, don't touch them, don't crowd them, don't make fast movements. If they want to leave, let them leave. Be prepared for thinking problems. Don't ask them to do math. Don't give complicated directions. Keep it simple. Wait until they calm down. Use short, clear sentences without jargon. So here's the thing about flooding. It can be chronic, but you need to know that it's really all about pain control, not anger control. And it'll take time to learn new habits. Flooding is contagious, but so is calm. So you want to work on yourself first because you can't hope to stop someone else's flooding unless you can stop your own. Also remember that calm is power and upset is weakness. You may have a lot of things from the past that drive you bonkers. Stay in the present time. When you find yourself going here and there in your mind, bring yourself back to this moment. Look at your hands. What are you doing? You'll learn all kinds of ways to do this in the BALM program. And remember, the breath points the way to love. Mindfulness is the path and kindness your most important superpower. It's important to breathe mindfully. Mindful breathing holds the key to calm and present moment living. In the next webinar, we will explain why and we'll give you a few exercises. And of course, the Balm Family Program will give you even more. This webinar is only a small piece of the puzzle. Don't stop here. Keep coming to the intro sections, read the book, Balm the Loving Path to Family Recovery, and participate in our online Balm Family Recovery Program. For more information on how to enroll as a Balm family member, speak with the person who enrolled you to the, who referred you to this webinar. To learn more about the Balm or get technical help with your enrollment or use of the program, Visit us at balmfamilyrecovery.com. Call us at 1-888-998-BALM. Thank you so much for coming tonight. It's been wonderful to share this quick look into the BALM. And um, it's just good to be together. Next week, we're going to look at mindfulness and just the idea of how the calming down can work and how it can help you, and the power of the breath in that process. And then the sixth week, well, this is webinar four, the fifth is mindfulness, and the sixth is what do we do after treatment? So if anyone you know has someone in treatment, in two weeks we'll be talking about that topic as well. Okay, folks, wonderful to see you. Last call for questions, comments, thoughts? Remember, everybody, be a loving mirror. Bye.